मैं ईमेल आईडी से भेजा था हाँ हाँ नो सर बिकॉज वी हैव दैट वी डोंट हैव दैट यू नो प्रीमियम प्रीमियम और सेपरेट फ्रॉम सो एवरीबॉडी इज वाइनिंग देयर दैट्स व्हाई वी आर वेट पासवर्ड इज नॉट सपोर्टिंग आई डी एंड पासवर्ड Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. New meeting. Mm -hmm. Again. Yep. Oh, yep. Uh, entered sir your ID and password. Yes, yes. Join. Yes, yes sir. Join. And then. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm so sorry. You know, I was not, I was having difficulty with my Zoom. I'm sorry to keep you all waiting. No, no issue, sir. Right. Now, how do we, how do we proceed from here? Uh, uh, we will start, sir. Uh, first, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Dr. Sudhir Andrew, sir, I can see you. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Oh, hello. Uh, Sanju, yeah. sir, yes, sir. How are you, sir? It's, uh, I, sorry I, for disturbance yes. and inconvenience, sir. Okay. So, so uh, are we having uh, uh, Mr. Satish Kumar? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Giving yes. Professor Satish Kumar giving an uh, giving an inaugural talk. Yes, sir. So yeah. we'll be waiting for uh, some more participant or uh, Govind sir. Shall we start now in middle? Uh, we'll August start participant. You got, enough, you got enough time, I hope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because we have already lost about ten minutes. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's okay. So shall we start, Govind sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Okay. So uh, namaskar. <clears throat> Good afternoon to all of you. I Sanjeev Kumar Sharma. your moderator for the day honorable vice chancellor of sr university sikkim professor c s satish kumar a speaker for the day dr sudhir andrew and author all associate deans hods faculty members and all participants from the various industry and catering colleges and my dear students this is my privilege and honor to welcome all of you on behalf of the school of hospitality and tourism studies srm university sikkim so in these notes uh, may i request to dr govind pratap singh associate dean basic science to welcome our honorable vice chancellor sir and 
uh, Dr. Sudhir Andrew, sir. Over to you, Govind, sir. Thank you, Sanjeev, sir. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasant privilege to welcome this August gathering on this present morning. At the outset, let me extend warm welcome for Vice Chancellor, Professor C.S. Satish Kumar. We welcome Amishas, our learned speaker for the day, Dr. Sudhir Andrew. We would also like to extend our warm welcome to all the participants, including those who have joined us through the Facebook live streaming. The SRM University Sikkim is a small university located in the lap of beautiful Himalayas. But we are as ambitious as these mighty Himalayas, and we look forward to more of these intellectual interactions and grow up as an academic hub. I welcome one and all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, may I request uh, Satish sir to Thank you, Sanjeev. Welcome, sir. Uh, good morning to everyone and uh, respected our speakers, Dr. Sudhir Andrews and our Associate Dean, Dr. Govan Pratap, sir, and coordinator, our Sanjeev, HOD of Hospitality and Tourism, our Suresh, other HODs, participants from all over India, they joined, uh, and our students, welcome to everyone. I think uh, it's uh, the today's topic is a million dollar question. <laughs> now, this COVID has posed us to different risks, different questions, different corners. It pushed us to a, an extreme to the situations. Now, the inter important issue is that COVID also taught us several new things, how to survive in such difficult situations. Number one. This about intellectual interactions we never had in a globe, in a national level. We used to have in our Sikkim and bringing people like Sudhirji and other people is a big job for us to bring them to Sikkim because Sikkim connectivity is a, is a problem, challenge for us. So now this, uh, this uh, because of the COVID, we have gone now on this Zoom and other online platforms. It has given, it has given ample opportunities for people, students from Sikkim or from global, to listen to such eminent speakers and look at it and learn from them. This, this today's topic is very important because COVID redefined the priorities and importance of various industries. Earlier, we thought that education is a very important industry. We thought hospitality is a very, very important industry because hospitality is the main source for, for uh, income generation for many states, such in many countries rather. Now, uh, now we both sec the, both the sectors have become non-essential sec sectors now. Essential sectors become fortunately or unfortunately, uh, and people are joking on it. All that uh, 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 that liquor sec liquor industry has become the important essential sector for the industry for the <laughs> for the <laughs> for everyone now. Uh, and this redefinition of importance of industries very challenge for all of us, which we have spent several years and learning and developing and doing that like, and Sudhir sir is working on in hospitality, we all on academics for last 35, 40 years, 35 years. So now suddenly we have been told that you are non-essential. And another important thing that like, like hospitality, even our educational institution have a big challenge saying that how to open where to keep the students in the class, how to keep them. Is it possible to how to maintain the social distancing? Because still hospitality has some, some issues. Even not only for hospitality, even for education institute, we have a lot of challenges. I think I, I hope uh, whatever points you'll touch upon, Dr. Sudhirji, then we would also learn from them actually. And I, I want to wholeheartedly thank Sudhir Andrews for agreeing and coming on online for giving a del delivering this lecture. Thank you so much. And uh, I also thank Sanjeev and uh, for the HTM to arrange and invite such an eminent personality to deliver this lecture. I don't want to begin, talk a big, a big lecture on uh, an agrel. We all are waiting for Sudhir sir to say something to to uh, to throw light on this issue. So that it's very, it's a big question mark to all of us actually. So let us learn from each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sudhir Andrews for coming and uh, agreeing for giving the lecture. 
Thank so, you. Uh, thank, thank you, you very sir. Much, Professor. Thank you, sir, uh, for your enlightening, uh, lovely words to us, uh, spreading all the uh, knowledge and uh, welcome to our, all the students. Now, uh, this is my privilege and honor uh, that today in front of us, we can say the father of uh, hospitality education, that is Dr. Sudhir Andrews, sir. So only Dr. Sudhir Andrews and name itself, uh, that is a full introduction. So may I request now our head of the department, Dr. Suresh N, to introduce our uh, respected Dr. Sudhir Andrews, sir. Over to you, Dr. Suresh, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Honorable VC, sir, respectable associate deans, and other department HODs. Apart from that, I, this is privileged to introduce today's resource person. And as uh, Sanjeev sir told it, uh, it's an, uh, everyone knows about that uh, Sudhir Andrew. The name is the person, those who are crossing the hospitality and tourism. Because a uh, yeah, small introduction about himself, as a formality. Uh, he completed his uh, MBA in uh, IIM Ahmedabad. Then uh, he joined as a uh, human resource in ITC Welcome Group. He has an over plus more than uh, 35 years of experience in the hospitality industry. Apart from that, very important thing is he is the author of 11 hospitality books, which has been accepted by the AACT. That's an official reference for the students. Those who are studying hospitality or hotel management, they should have the uh, book of Sudhir Andrews book because he is almost oh. 11 books in the various areas. Apart from that, he has awarded many more awards like uh, uh, Rashtriya Guru Award, Rajiv Gandhi Excellency Award, Indian Archies Award, International Intellectual Achievement Award, likewise, there are so many awards. I'm not, don't want to take much more time because uh, everyone wants to hear what we do after the COVID-19 because they, everyone is expecting um, most affected industries, hospitality and tourism. How we will change, how we can change ourselves to access with the future, likewise. I'm also expecting that, sir. So uh, on behalf of the hospitality and tourism, I am welcoming you and I'm uh, very proud to say, I'm introducing you into this webinar, sir. You are most welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, <clears throat> thank uh, you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you very much to all participants and all the attendees. Uh, I also would like to enlight and highlight that Dr. Sudhir Andrew is the first, first MBA from IIM Ahmedabad who joined a career with O'Brien Hotels in 1971. And he has set up uh, most of the uh, hotel management college, okay, that is uh, O'Brien Hotel in 1971. But now that name is OCLD, that is a topmost college in our India. And uh, also he added mo most of the uh, skills and knowledge to Manipal, which is a Manipal Catering College in Manipal. So likewise, uh, we are very, in fact, we all are the hotel management of hospitality and tourism faculty. In fact, also we have studied the books which, which has written by Dr. Sudhir Andrews. So there is no doubt that uh, I'm very happy to host and welcome uh, like father of hospitality education. And because of his contribution, in education sector in India, he has received so many awards. So thank you uh, very much, all of you, and welcome once again, sir. So over to you, Dr. Sudhir Andrew. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you very, very much. And um, a very good afternoon to the Honorable Vice Chancellor and all the senior management of the CRM, SRM uh, University. And uh, I have a, a one wish, and that is, I hope you and your families are all safe and well, okay, under this COVID-19. Now, I'm going to be sharing this, my presentation that was given to me was how hotel operations will change, okay? 
and I'm going to be sharing. Um, <clears throat> I will be sharing my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Uh, can you allow me to share my screen, uh, uh, Sanjeev? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Govind sir, badly continue. Participant screen sharing. Yes, sir. Govind sir. Kindly allow Dr. Sudhir Andrew, sir, to but, uh, share their screen. Thank you, your patience for everybody. It is still uh, disabled. Supposing I reduce the screen, what will happen? No, sir, you can do it, sir. Now go to the share screen and do it. I think it can Yeah, do yeah, it. I think so. It itself will reduce the screen, sir, if you want to share. Yeah. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm going to... There you go. Wonderful. So this is my presentation. As, as you see, I've written, named my presentation Bouncing Back from COVID-19. Uh, the hospitality industry has faced many of these difficulties and disruptions before. And uh, at least for the students who may not remember pre, uh, maybe pre uh, 80s or something, we had uh, uh, many wars and that uh, upset our hospitality industry. But in most recent times, we had uh, the, uh, the SARS um, epidemic. Then we had the plague uh, from in Surat. And, and most recently, we had the terror attack uh, at the Taj in Bombay, uh, Mumbai, actually. <clears throat> now, whatever these disruptions happen, the hospitality industry bounced back marvelously. So I have a full confidence that they will bounce back, okay? Uh, this uh, uh, COVID-19, is like everything, it has a beginning and it will have an end. We are on the verge of having a vaccine. Once that is going to happen, some things will change. But uh, the hotel operations will have to take a very different approach to what, um, to what existed before the COVID-19. Now, the main concerns um, of uh, of the for the hotel yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, health and safety will be top number one concern because the customers will be having this particular um, issue top of their mind and so will the employees and so will so many other people the second concern is cash liquidity to get started and to run the operations. The third is that the COVID-19 has forced us in a, uh, has pushed us into adopting technology because one of the main things about it, uh, of COVID-19 is to have a least touch on surfaces, least touch on a lot of people. And so technology is going to come about and um, uh, come about in our lives. And final, finally, we have social contributions to do and work with our respective local governments in terms of what they will, uh, what plans they have for the society also. So that's very much our responsibility too. But also we, in, in, in trying to meet this, we also have several challenges. The challenges are, the issue of social distancing. Now, you know, hotels is a place where everybody gather, you know. Now here we have to man maintain social distancing. This is a very big issue. Staff safety is another issue because they are, the hotel is responsible for them and their safety. Working capital is an issue, challenge. 
and providing maximum physical evidence. You see, the thing is, um, the the thing is that things like health and and hygiene and all are very intangible subjects, you know, and we have to tangibilize them, and therefore we have to give a lot of physical evidence. Just like after the terror attack we started having checking of cars at the gates and we had security checks outside the, the hotel in the portico and then we had screening of baggage those were all physical evidence to show to the customers we understand your concern and we care you know so this is going to be a challenge how to do this and uh, of course the challenge is given the circumstances one has to supersede in terms of high quality of service, you know. Uh, so people have to put a little extra effort in everything they do in having a good quality of service. So people will uh, appreciate it. You know? So in terms of the concerns, I'll go back to it. The health and safety, I will go through each of these four issues, okay. And the first is health and safety. I recommend all hotels to have a soft opening, okay? A soft opening, which means opening a few floors, just one restaurant, a limited kitchen, and fewer staff who are multi-skilled. We do not know how much of guests are going to come and whether they'll come in a rush or not. But uh, so it's, wor it's worth having a soft opening because we don't want to put out our costs at a, a, at a disadvantage, you know. So we just open slowly so that as the customers are coming and be able to save a lot of costs in energy and a lot of other things. And all staff will be wearing surgical hotel sponsored gloves and masks. What I'm saying is that the hotels will not have, they're well, telling the employees you wear your mask and somebody will come with all different kind of masks. That doesn't look professional, that doesn't look good. So my recommendation to all the hotels is you have your own branded mask, you know, and, and everybody's on the same page and everybody looks good, it looks professional, and, uh, and it's a good idea for branding uh, the property, you know. Uh, one important person that we would have to hire is a chief safety and sanitation um, officer uh, to oversee the safety standards, which will be at a very high standard. Okay. And one of the initial things would be to tie up with the local hospital uh, for two things. One is to for them to give us the complete sterile operations that they follow and train our staff to follow those things. And two is that to have a, a hospital that will take any employee or guest who suddenly contracts this COVID, okay? So that they will be able to be sent to that hospital. Okay, now let's start go through step by step a guest arrival, okay? and how we have these touch points of physical evidence that we are giving that we care for your safety. So let's assume some hotels have their own limousine or a little van to receive the guest at the airport, okay? The driver will have gloves on, he'll have a mask, and and between the driver's seat and the back seat, there will be a screen, okay? There'll be a screen to block out the driver as well as the guests. All guests will be provided a certain pouch in which will be um, the hospital mask, okay? Uh, the hotel mask, sorry. Uh, we'll have the hotel mask. Uh, we'll have uh, surgical gloves and we'll have um, a hand sanitizer and a little booklet which is going to while they're driving to the uh, hotel from the airport they can go through that 
and they will see in that booklet what are the things that they can be prepared for as far as the hotel. So if you create, uh, prepare them with the expectations, then it becomes much easier for them to uh, arrive at your property. Okay, then they come to the gate. At the gate, the security officers, uh, the security men will have that uh, thermal uh, thermometer, that device, and will take the temperature of each person in the car, okay? And uh, if anyone has fever that that car is not allowed in, okay? I may have to go to that hospital that we have tied up with. Anyway, so that is the first thing we show. Frankly, all the gadgets and things, uh, procedures we have for terrorism, in my opinion, can be discarded uh, because we have a new terror. It's not the human terror, but the COVID terror, okay? So instead of those things, procedures we have, the standing operating procedures will have to change. Then they come to the portico. At the portico, there will be a tunnel, um, a disinfection tunnel. Now there's a picture on the top. It's being hidden by my, uh, my pictures. I don't know if you can see it from your side, but there's that disinfection tunnel. It looks like this. The people go through that and uh, hydro um, peroxide mist is poured on them. Okay. And it is, it is, um, it has no odor, it has no, um, uh, it doesn't leave any stains, okay? You don't feel it actually because it's a mist. And then they go through that. And at the event, once they came out, uh, there's a new kind of gadget that's come for uh, sanitizing the shoes, okay? So the, you place the, your shoe on that thing and it does whoosh and I'll be showing you a picture uh, after this presentation, if you will allow me. Um, and then they will enter the lobby. The baggage also will be sanitized outside in the portico. Then they enter the lobby. In the lobby, what will happen is all the, furni all the furniture should be taken out. And maybe you could have just one or two single chairs three feet apart or one meter apart. The customers want to see space. And therefore, uh, once they enter the lobby, they are not claustrophobic and they see space. And also we have lesser service staff. Okay. So that's why I said we'll have to have fewer staff with multi-skills, okay? So that is going to happen. So they're not seeing a whole lot of our staff hanging around like bellboys and concierge and all these fellows, all out. There may be one bellboy carrying the luggage and one receptionist coming there. And then on the floor of the lobby will be this one meter distance um, markings. It could be a cross or, a, or it could be a circle. And all the customers will one by one have to stand and have wait for the reception procedures. By the way, when I come to technology, the reception procedure will go, but we'll talk about that a little later. Okay, then uh, all the things like the pen uh, and the pad or if anything for, for signing in will have to be sanitized. And a little, and there'll be a hand sanitizer also on the reception counter. Then, um, then once they are signed in, they will go to the elevator. At the elevator, uh, in the elevator the floor, they will have markings. If it's a smaller elevator, they'll have markings right diagonally across two markings, and the, and the, and only two people can go in that. And therefore, the people down, there has to be somebody out there who's going to ensure that. Mind you, the guests are also ready and prepared with these kind of things, okay? And they are happy that the hotel is taking these precautions. Then you enter the elevator and sit there. If you have a larger elevator, 
you may have four points at the four corners of the elevator, a maximum four people going in. No overcrowding of the elevator. And in the booklet, it will also say that if the elevator is overcrowded, please don't enter the elevator. Wait for the next elevator. Now, the elevator touch points are these uh, buttons to take you out to the floor. The outside one also, you can see a picture. Uh, and these have to be cleaned every half an hour, even 15 minutes if it is possible. This, that means sanitize. And customers would like to see that and that we are taking care of these touch points also. That's on the video. Yeah. We are showing, right? So cutting the room. And, uh, and then they go to their room. So, right? the so no. now we come to the room. I su suggest that we have a little notice outside, nicely done notice, not a paper with cello tape painted on the on the door, but a neat thing to say, this room has been sanitized for your comfort, okay? Um, and of course, they have a booklet and there will be a booklet in the room which will tell them all the things that they need to observe to, to, to navigate themselves across the hotel, okay? Uh, the rooms will be sanitized by hospital specifications because remember the hospital people have come and trained the staff and a lot of technology will be used later for, for room sanitization and all that. And uh, visual stickers need to be placed behind the door about washing your hands, about having a mask wherever you go and so on and so forth. And uh, it'll be also in the elevators. Now in the elevators, normally we find a restaurant picture and all, but now we are going to have a picture of how a guest should be, uh, take precautions to walk around, okay? Now, um, in the room, what happens is that we allot every third room. So as you know, in a hotel corridor, you have rooms lined up like that. So when we are assigning to a customer a room, we leave one room and then give the next room to the customer. So we are, you know, separating people and giving the evidence that we are maintaining social distance. Uh, once a room is checked out, we keep it for 24 to 72 hours. There are some hotels who keep it for 72 hours. That may be a bit too much, but I feel 24 hours uh, to desanitize it, you know, to sanitize it, sorry. To, desan uh, to sanitize it and make the room ready for the next occupant. And the, the next occupant in the booklet will say that your room has been um, sanitized uh, and not allotted for 24 hours or 36 hours, whatever you want to say. Of course, the rooms will have sanitizers and um, uh, housekeeping staff will be wearing a badge um, which will say screened. And below that screened badge, they will have the date and time of when they were screened last. Now, screening has to be done very often in the hotel. This is one thing. And the staff also will have the time written when they were last screened. So screening is happening regularly. So the customer doesn't feel that, oh, nine o'clock and now it is three o'clock, this lady hasn't been screened. So we want to screen them at a regular state and they can and give as a proof, sir, I've been screened, here's my screen match. Uh, airing the room is very important as part of the procedure of sanitizing the room. Uh, in the bathroom, we have the usual protocols of the, um, the, the paper uh, band that goes around the WC, and the, the bathroom tumblers are 
got covers of those uh, cellophane covers. These are physical evidences of sanitation. Okay. Then um, uh, additional amenities, I feel that should be kept in the housekeeping pantry on the floor. Instead of calling a housekeeper, I need more towels or I need more blankets or I need more soap. All these things, the customer can walk down the corridor and pick it up himself or herself from the floor pantry. Okay, so to avoid uh, a, a person, a human coming and supplying it to them. Um, there is a, a thing of ozonators, I believe, that can be put in the AC, AC units, which are non-chemical sanitizers, and that will save a lot of um, a lot of time and effort in sanitizing a room. There are bed sanitizing robots also. Uh, public televisions must always keep showing um, procedures of ma maintaining um, uh, maintaining um, hygiene and sanitation and what the hotel is doing, okay? Uh, <clears throat> then we come to dining room. As I said, there will be only one restaurant in the beginning and all the tables will be three feet apart. Now, some hotels will have a problem that they have so much of furniture crowded in a restaurant that they want to pack in as many people and don't have a place to store their furniture, okay? So what they will do is have a flagging system of green and red flags neatly done and placed on the table. Now the green flags will space out every three, uh, three feet and the red flag will say if that table has been booked or reserved. So anyone leading a customer into the thing can see which are the green flagged tables and can go and sit there, knowing very fully well that it is sanitized and it is ready to receive you, <clears throat> okay? Again, the staff will be wearing screen badges. Now, I'm not, I mean, I recommend, as a matter of fact, that we offer initially a choice of table load menus of a very high quality. Okay, uh, this, uh, the chef will make it and we try not to have the, the waiters coming and giving the service. They're trying to avoid that. So there may be a counter like there where the, 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 uh, the food, the table load menu is placed on the counter and they take their whole tray and go to their respective, something like what um, we experience in airlines or in trains, but it's of a higher quality, okay? <clears throat> and quantity too. Uh, possibly if you want to go further, hotels can use screens, you know, the Chinese kind of screens of silk or paper mache, light screens, and they can separate the tables if they want to. The covers, the tables will not have covers on it, but the covers will be handed by uh, a, a, a waiter on a tray. They will be folded neatly and placed on a tray and the customers will pick up those covers and they set it up. It is of the customer's uh, request if they want the waiter to set it up. Okay, anyway, the waiters has gloves and all that. So uh, that's up to the customer or they may want to do it themselves, okay? Um, now there's a very big question, should we have buffets? Now, immediately we think that yes, buffets uh, is the best way because customers can go and, uh, go, and uh, go and help themselves. They don't need a waiter to come close to them. But there's another argument that uh, there is a perception that people will sneeze while they're eating food or cough when they're eating food or spit while they're talking and all that is going into the food. So there's a problem here. But we do have a thing called a spit guard, which has to be put on the, uh, attached to the, uh, the counter, the buffet counter. And all the, all the cutlery has to be disposable. Okay, we cannot keep having the reused spoons for serving yourself. 
all disposable, even eating. So, um, so we are going to see a lot of disposable stuff out there. Yes, we'll be happy, mind you. Don't think they are going to say, oh, we haven't got silver service. No, they will be happy because they will have, uh, they know that this thing is sterilized stuff and I throw it away and then nobody else will use it, okay? So that's about um, the dining room. Then we come to the in-room dining, okay? In the in-room, by the way, people are more likely to stay in their rooms and eat. So in-room dining is going to be a very, very big phenomenon, okay? Uh, so I'm recommending that uh, hotels set up gourmet food dispensers on floors with good quality food in a tray it's done in more in, in, in upmarket supermarket malls where they have a full meal uh, in a tray covered with cellophane and all that, and they take it. But you will need to have a place. Of course, those places are warm to keep the food warm. But if you want to have it, there is in your room. I'm, I'm suggesting a microwave oven be installed so that they can heat the food and eat it whenever they want to. The mini bars in the rooms should have the full complement of drinks, you know, the small ones that come in the in aeroplanes and those kind of things, stock it with all the different kinds. And the moment you pick up one, it, it goes into the uh, billing section, you know, automatically there it goes to the billing section. Um, then uh, you can use RFID technology for clearance of of trays, so if people put a tray outside their room, okay, the RFID thing is just above the floor, uh, above the floor and will indicate directly to the room service, here is a uh, used tray and that needs to be collected. So they don't have to go each floor and look at a tray. They know exactly which floors have a, um, um, a used tray. Of course, in the room, the main entertainment is the TV. So the television should be have its full complement of, uh, of uh, movies and news and sports, and hopefully sports will start again, uh, and all that, you know, for them to uh, enjoy. OK, so that is in-room dining. Now let's come to the human resource aspect of it. The human resource aspect of it is lean staff. Let me tell you folks, one thing is that the hotels, COVID-19 has done, is moved the hotels from overstaffing their properties and going into lean staffing because the guests want to don't want to see too much of humans around servicing. They want to see space. They don't want to have too many humans around. Uh, housekeeping as a department will become most important because they are the main people who are sanitizing the rooms, corridors, public areas. And they will have a lot of technology assisting them. Okay, So housekeeping is a very important stuff. Then you're going to have multi-skilled engineers, AMC contracts, if you have sophisticated technology. You will have to go with the OE, uh, original um, equipment manufacturer and go into an AMC contract. Okay? All staff should be wearing badges that we have talked about. Thermal monitoring of staff entrance every hour. And when staff report for duty in the morning, they will go through that similar tunnel that I had shown you for guests, but at the staff entrance, there will be another tunnel. The cafeteria timings will be spaced out. So it would be from 12, say, to 3.30. And each department will be given a time to say, this is your time for lunch, okay? And so that there is no overcrowding 
and even people in the in the uh, in the cafeteria will have to keep that uh, one meter distance. Um, now a new concept is coming called the use of outsourced service. And uh, this is something that is very useful for students of the future in terms of jobs. They can start an outsourced service. Uh, when I talk about students' uh, careers and all that, I talk about this outsourced service as a very important entrepreneurship uh, venture. And what do I mean by that is that the hotels now are going to avoid having their own captive restaurants and a lot of facilities like spas and, uh, and salons and whatever. It is all going to be given to outside operators. So hotels are going to be, that's why the Americans call it uh, the lodging industry. They don't call it hospitality because now they're going to concentrate only on room business, okay? On room business. So all the other things are going to be uh, outsourced. Now I've experienced this in Dubai, in Paris, in London, in, in, in Canada, and I've noticed that everything is done on outsourced services. Okay, so here's a great opportunity for students who may like to start their outsourced service. And uh, staff transportation is another thing. We don't want them to come on their own. We don't know which bus they'll take or which car they will ride or which metro they will take and come in contact. So uh, the uh, hotel will have to have staff transportation of their own and pick the staff up and drop them back. Okay, and prepare a quarantine room. Okay, this is a very important thing for both uh, guest uh, quarantine as well as staff quarantine before they are moved to a hospital. So these are the safety things we do for the staff. All right. Uh, now I come to the, that sanitation over. Now let's come to the liquidity part, the finance part of it. Of course, there's a, uh, there's a department called Federation of Associations in Indian Tourism and Hospitality. They've got an acronym for it called FAITH. And FAITH has written uh, a direct letter to the Prime Minister, okay? And uh, saying what they would like to have money in their hands to start their business. Things like payment of salaries for 12 months by the government, a moratorium on taxes, moratorium on excise duties, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole list of things. From all these lists of things that were given to the prime minister, uh, the only response the government gave was a three month moratorium on existing payments for interest and loans. Okay, the three months they don't have to pay. And the rest went on. Now, what happened with the government is this, they wanted to have 20 lakh crore um, package and they did it in three tranches. And what we see here is that they have spent money on people who are the lowest and most dispossessed and struggling. These are the people who are going to get benefit of the huge kitty that the government had done because it will affect the maximum number of people. Now, so the first tranche was the accent was on the micro, small and medium enterprises in which uh, certain hotel lodgings will come under so they can take advantage of that. Now, it's a very interesting thing for all of you to know that the branded hotels and the chains that we know of constitute only 5% of room inventory. And 95% of room inventory in the country belongs to bed and breakfast, guest houses, unbranded budget hotels, and so on and so forth. 
Now, this, this statistic shocked me even because we have all these fancy hotels uh, facing us and, and we think they are the hotel industry. No, the hotel industry is uh, the 95 percent of people who are doing business and many of them would be uh, falling in the tranche one, in which case uh, a micro unit would get one crore if they are to have a turnover of five crores, a small unit will get a benefit of 10 crores if they have a turnover of 50 crores and mid medium hotel will get 10 crores if they have a turn uh, 20 crores if they get a turnover of 100 crores. And trans two went to the migrants and uh, trans three went to a uh, okay. So there we go. We are not seeing any other, uh, shall we say, uh, assistance from government or for the hotel industries, which are the branded ones and the fancy ones. So what does the hotel industry do? What they do is the following. One is they will bring about tremendous cost control. That's why I said just open a few floors because the manpower to service that floor is saved. Those other extra floors will be saved. The cost of electricity and power will be saved. Lighting will be saved. Amenities will be saved. And so many things, you know. So cost control is very important. Renegotiate refinancing loans with uh, better payment plans. Avoid discount panic. Don't start a discount war because it's going to spoil the reputation of the hotel. And it's not going to cover the kind of costs that we want to cover. You know? uh, uh, an area which can be tremendously controlled is the energy consumption. That has to be not monitored. So we do have rooms which switch off automatically as the guest moves out, so and so. Then we have extended payment cycles, you know, for uh, vendors who supply us vegetables, fruit, and various things. Uh, so if they have, if we pay them every uh, two months, we can extend it to every three months, okay, like that. Buy essentials only for existing occupancy levels keep inventories low, seriously think of lean staff. When I say lean staff, I mean forever, not only for this period, forever. And wastage control and recycling is also a cost saving thing that we have. Now, how do we generate revenue then, if supposing it? Firstly, we, even right now, we keep in touch with loyal customers keep them informed as to what is happening, keep a dialogue with them through the social media or personal media, leverage the domestic market. Now, inbound traffic from abroad is going to take some time before it takes off. But India has a very, very vibrant domestic market. And that domestic market can be tapped on. And frankly, that domestic market, according to me, will save the hotel industry. So we don't need outsiders to come and save it for us. We can depend upon our domestic market to do it for us. Uh, as long as they have the confidence that we are following those procedures that I had mentioned earlier, and they can feel safe. Uh, then you build on loyalty programs, you know, give them good deals. Uh, conduct corporate meetings, ensuring distance and seating. Examine food delivery service for the neighborhood. Even gourmet hotels are now thinking of uh, giving food delivery service to their neighborhood. So good gourmet food. You have to make money after all, you see. Cater to parties below 50 people. Uh, consider a drive through service. People drive through a window, I mean, come to a window, they collect their food and off they go. And exploit digital marketing and social media for uh, keeping the hotels, um, keeping the customers informed 
I'm going to be showing you a film uh, shortly, and uh, that will be uh, will give you an idea of what I mean. Exploits in digital marketing. Okay. Then we have our social contributions. Now we have to work very closely with the government and the local government, and uh, we. Uh, as a matter of fact, during this period, a lot of hotels are given their rooms as quarantine rooms because there is a shortage of beds in hospitals. Uh, I know some hotels that have provided packaged meals to cops who are on duty, as well as um, the frontline uh, workers during the pandemic, like the nurses and all. Um, then on an ongoing basis, we are concerned about planting of trees and improving the environment. Uh, using neighborhood resources for the supply of goods, creating employment locally, uh, use of alternate energy, you know, wind power, bio gas, uh, solar energy, and so forth, and keeping adjoining areas clean. It's not only the hotel campus that is to be kept clean, but even beyond it, just around it, with uh, make it look clean so that. Uh, you know, we are contributing to the city, city's, con uh, city's uh, concern for cleanliness, okay? All right. So those four things that were mentioned earlier, I have mentioned uh, safety, social contribution, and, uh, the liquidity issue, and now let's come to technology, okay? <clears throat> technology. Vigorously pursue artificial intelligence and other technology. We are going to very soon see, it has already started, self-check-in using codes on mobiles um, through, um, you know, DACs, direct access control systems, okay? So they don't have to go to a reception anymore. They go to a booth, just like an ATM, Everything uh, they, they they punch in their code, okay. They receive a code to open their door. They can select the room in that screen, and after they finish, they wash, sanitize their hands, <laughs> and even that the buttons and all will be sanitized constantly, and they go to their rooms. No touch with the with the receptionist at all. Gourmet food dispensers on floors, so you don't have to have room service people coming in, into your room. Okay. Uh, full liquor, uh, even if there are people coming for room service to the room, the, the people don't come into the room. They'll bring the tray, they'll bring the trolley, and they'll push it inside the main area, and the guest takes it and takes it into the room. So they don't enter the room. Though they will still have the screen badges and all that. But Extra precautions. Um, full liquor options in guest rooms, mini bars, I mentioned that. Introduce microwave ovens in rooms. Self-service room amenities in housekeeping, mentioned it before. Uh, revenue management software. Data analytics to probe guest attitudes. Data analytics is one of the big things uh, that is going to happen in the hotel industry. So any of the students going to will get a job like that. Okay. And robots for cleaning carpets and others. And you can see a picture of a robot cleaning the corridors. Okay, it's already there. Now, then you have self check-in using codes on mobiles. We have mentioned that. In-room voice technology like the Echo, Alexa. So now you can say, Alexa, please switch on the lights. You don't have to go and switch it on yourself. Please put on the bedroom lights or the, the reading lights. Alexa, put on the, uh, uh, put on the shower, okay? Blah, 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 okay? So now just through voice, you can command all the functions in the room, open my curtains. So that's a huge thing that is coming in. Um, artificial intelligence for neural networks to, to see human behavior, what their needs are, and bring it up to date in terms of strategy 
for getting more guests, data analytics, interactive smart tables in dining rooms. Nowadays, there is a smart table coming out. A lot of things, these things are already there, mind you. They're all working on, on um, scalability and uh, bringing down the cost you know, for, for commercial use. But the technology is there. And one of the technologies is this table in the, in the restaurant, uh, which is a smart table, okay? So you just uh, press something and all the menu comes up on the table. And then, it, you know, it, you read the menu. Then against the menu, there'll be a thing. You can select that and it'll have a column to say no onions or no garlic or no whatever, <laughs> you know, or low salt. Uh, you can choose exactly and and press and the order goes straight to the kitchen. Now, what could happen with as far as the food is concerned, it could be either given in a counter once the food is ready, very much like the food uh, courts. If you've been to a food court, they'll say, please sit down, sir. Your the court, to token number will come up there. And they give you a token like thing and number 723 okay i go and collect my food okay that's the kind of thing the other thing that could happen is having robots robots who will pick the food up and supply it at the table uh, the third uh, thing could be that um, the people actually select their own food they, they select the fish, the, the accompaniments, and things like that, and are watching the chef make the food. There are some restaurants like that also, okay? Uh, so there are a lot of innovations like that that will come. And even that smart table will recommend the wine that will go with your dish, and it'll give a signal to the wine seller to take that particular wine and find it for you and all sorts of things. You know? Then digital payments are absolutely important, okay? No going to a cashier and all that nonsense. All digital payments. Digital display technology for meetings, augmented and virtual reality based um, uh, pr promotional uh, material, robotics for cooking standardized menus, you know, things like uh, French fries, things like burgers, something, which are repeated, even, even um, like tea, coffee, things that are repeated very often uh, can be made by robots. It doesn't need to have a chef to do that. Uh, and also seller management with advanced pairing. Robots can also be used in stores uh, to, to take out items from the, from the shelves and things like that. Uh, but I want to show you something. This is technology, all right. But I want to tell you about future technology that is already there, but are, uh, you know, they're, they're working on bringing it to scalability. And this future technology is biometric painted walls for ambient body temperature, holograms instead of television, Virtual scenery glass panes. Now these glass panes, the window panes, they, they believe that hotels will be coming in very congested city towers and things like that. And they will really look, be looking into buildings. So what they've created is windows that will you can choose what scenery you want. And it's virtual, kind of the augmented virtual, virtual, where you can choose between a desert scene, a sea, a sea beach scene, or a forest scene, or a hill scene, or a park, or a garden. You can select your thing. And it's so real, you can hear it. The water, you know, the waves coming onto the beaches, and it sounds very, or the birds cheeping in the forest to create the mood, okay? So then self-laundering linen through nanotechnology. This is, thank you, the laundry departments would have gone because it's self-laundering through nanotechnology. Biometric pillows that light up for you to read at night and it takes use the heat of your neck for that. And this is a very interesting thing, smart bath taps 
mats giving instant health reports on the bathroom mirror. See, all our veins end at the, at the feet, right? So you come onto the smart bath mirror, and immediately a report goes as to your liver function, whatever, whatever, and where you need to give attention. The mirror itself is a, uh, is a computer. I mean, so while you're brushing your teeth, you can actually send messages on the mirror of the bathroom, okay? Uh, In-room sensors for all tasks, RFID tray clearance I mentioned. And if you're starting a home delivery, the future is drones for home delivery and robots for carpets and other services. You saw that picture. Now the picture here you, you see, uh, out here is uh, actually that machine that gives you the room on your mobile, okay? And a code on your mobile. And the people that are standing there are not real. They are robots. And they, if you have a question to ask them, they, they will answer. Okay. What time does the restaurant open? They will tell you. So what time it opens. Okay. So those are robots. And that's a machine which will give you the code how to open your room door with your mobile. Okay. So these are some of the things that are... Or they, there is a technology where the bed uh, automatically makes itself. You know, like in the morning, you don't need housekeeping anymore. So there you go. This is the future of technology. Now, for the management, they will have to devise new standard operating procedures for COVID-proof operations. Vendor management will become very important where the management will actually go to where these vendors store their stuff, how clean they are. The vehicles that they send for delivery to the hotel are highly clean. And the people who bring them are also following the procedures of masks. Why? because materials can bring in our friend, the COVID inside the hotel. So the whole vendor management is to be very, very, very particular. Then goods handling policy, the receiving storage and issuing and all has to be done, keeping uh, safety and sanitation and hygiene in, in, in place. Then responsibility for staff employment and their maintenance, daily staff screening, social distancing at work, um, avoid break shifts. You don't want people to go out and come back, go out and come back, no. Uh, staff cafeteria, lunch timings I mentioned, quarantine room for suspected staff and utilize spaces release banquet halls and um, rooms. You know, the banquet halls are going to be empty because it will be some time before banquets come back. And the big fat Indian weddings will go <laughs> and you'll have smaller weddings. And therefore, uh, but the banquet hall space is there so you can convert it into webinar rooms. You could convert it into a library or chess rooms for the guests and things like that. And I told you about staff travel, the hotel will have to take responsibility for it and install face recognition software instead of thumb impressions, you know? So now you just show your face and you can get your attendance. That's the kind of stuff. Okay, I finished this part and before we go to questions I want to show you a slight film okay now I need the IT person to navigate me through this procedure so do I say stop sharing yes sir uh, yep do I say stop sharing yes sir please stop uh, press the stop sharing sir wonderful thank you, thank you. Now I want to bring in a movie. What do? How do I do that? Uh, yeah. mm. You 
you come to the movie sir and then i just share the screen so that will be okay i'll come movie. to the movie right sir. this is the movie yes sir now you share the screen sir again okay. how do i share it there's nothing to say share uh huh it's youtube thing you know let me see money player theater play on tv so it doesn't say share yeah. no what i'm saying is create a video or post no that should i say create a video or post youtube apps no no so notifications no so help me with this my arti uh, arti ma'am uh, kindly help in this arti sharma please yeah yeah, yeah. स्ट्रगलिंग विद ऑल दिस <laughs> okay here we go here's the film by hilton it's it's a it's a film by hilton the first time somebody has brought out this which gives you an idea of how the scenario will be see the lobby it is completely empty you see the space and all that now you see this movie and uh, enjoy as so she will be giving the commentary in the movie and you also can see
There you go. Now I am open to questions, if there are any. So thank you very much, sir, uh, for your lovely uh, presentations and a lovely web talk. Uh, being a hospitality uh, attendees and all, so we have seen uh, so much uh, SOP is getting changes now because of the COVID-19. Mm. So a lot of things are getting changed and thank you for your all the applications and all those informations. Now, uh, I'll request to all the attendees uh, for the questions and answer sessions. I'll request the attendees, once again, I'm announcing that you can use chat box for your questions and answer. And those answer questions will come to you, is it uh, Sanjeev? Right, sir, you right, can sir. be the receiver of those questions. Right, and you can ask on their behalf to me. Sure, sir. So that is session is open for question answer. We can do another thing. If somebody wants to ask a question while speaking, they can raise their hand and then we'll ask them to. Yes, sir. That can be also done. And uh, Dr. Govind, sir, uh, kindly manage this. Yeah. So, attendees. Yeah. Please. So, mm -hmm. Parimal, can you please ask the question? You can unmute yourself and then you can start. Please. You can raise the hand. Good afternoon, Mr. Andrews. You can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, I can. Ms. Andrews, this is Parimal Doshi from Calcutta. Lockdown greetings to everyone. My first question is, if robots start doing everything, then what will happen to the humans and the students and everybody? How will they get jobs? My second question is that there is a requirement for social distancing of somewhere between four and a half and six feet, depending on the WHO guidelines and the European guidelines. And because of that, the facilities in the hotels, including the restaurants, will come down to 35 or 50% of the original capacity. In that case, how will they become viable or how will they stay viable and how will they earn revenue? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. They're very valid questions, important questions. As a matter of fact, I have a full presentation altogether, maybe we can have it some other day, of what the to how the students will plan their careers, okay? Now, uh, I can only give a little snapshot of our, for your first question, that uh, in the future, doing your own business entrepreneurship is the way forward, and a lot of people will have to go into that. Now, the, the now entrepreneurship things seems to be very big, but it is very simple in the world that the Gen Y and Z are going into, okay, all the young people. Uh, it's not very difficult. Money is also very easy. And let me give you some examples of this, if I may. Uh, one example is that <clears throat> the students, I talked about the, um, this thing, uh, uh, also outsource services. That is one thing they are trained to do housekeeping services for corporates or for airlines or for anybody. Or they can open their own restaurant if you are a chef or for kitchen, okay? And uh, mind you, uh, a lot of all this technology things will be done by branded hotels and, uh, uh, and chains, okay? Because they have maybe deep pockets and they are also supported by international bodies. Now, but don't forget that 95% of the lodging in India is still there. So what people should start thinking is adapting, being flexible to go into tier B and C cities to go into other kind of things. Like for example, uh, in India you have such wonderful um, highway motels, very beautiful one with children's playgrounds and they look like palaces almost, you know? People can work there. A person can start their own uh, B&B. Uh, uh, so 
The greatest advantage this generation has in starting a business is they can reach out to anywhere in the world because of social media and all the other digital marketing. So there is a strategy. There is a strategy for work. Now the people who are going to work have to uh, develop some unique skills. Okay, unique skills that will be a winner. And I normally give the example of cricket. I don't know in Sikkim if they are fond of cricket, uh, but in cricket, every uh, you do have specialists. You know, like an opener and a, uh, and a one down batsman and a middle order batsman and wicket keeper batsman. Uh, the people of the future, the students of the future, if they are taking on a job, have to develop a level of skill and. Preferably a unique skill. So maybe I can work with Sanjeev and uh, maybe at a later date and give you this to your students because uh, this is, if you see my talks around the country, uh, uh, this is one topic that is very popular with me. Okay. So maybe we'll have that, but this is the, quite a snapshot. Mm -hmm. There has to be a plan B uh, mm -hmm. for, for all the students and Frankly, the people who do hospitality management have transferable skills to other industries like hospitals, retail, and so on. So, so. so there are a lot of uh, list of um, opportunities there. Now, coming to your second thing, uh, second point about robots. Uh, robots uh, will take some time to come into India, definitely. The, the Where it will come is for uh, routine kind of work, okay? Um, <clears throat> the specialized kind of work. So if you're wanting to clean the corridors, it's much more convenient to have uh, a robot. If you want to clean the carpet in a, in, in a, in a guest room, now you have these ca uh, carpet mouses that go and clean the carpet. It's a robot kind of thing. Uh, if you want to clean um, the car park, a robot can do that, okay? Pish washing, okay? It can be done by a robot. These are standard things that happen. But specialized jobs cannot be replaced, you see? Like the chefs, you can't replace them. Somebody who's a very good method or a good bartender who have got very good skills, you know, in doing things. So future students have to move towards that to get a job. And robots will take some time to come in a, in, a, in a big way. But what is going to happen is the way of life is that everybody can start a small business of their own. Now, let me give you an example of my students, okay? Uh, one boy, he, what he did is, I'm going to only concentrate on housekeeping linen. I'm going to store, he, he's in Dubai and he said, he has a store where he keeps the linen from the world. He goes around Egyptian cotton linen, uh, Thai linen, wherever, you know. And he supplies linen only to the hotels and their replacement and all. He's a millionaire now. Simple idea. Okay. Another boy says, comes from a good family. He says, I will start a cart. Food cart. Okay, food cart. What will you do in that? He says, I'm going to prepare biryani and have this cart. The cart won't be an ordinary cart. It will have nice scallops and colors and all this, like sometimes like our ice cream machines. And I will give good quality uh, biryani outside corporate offices at lunchtime or on, on college campuses. And he's done the uh, uh, market study and he believes he could make 40,000 rupees a day. Now, with that kind of money, he can be driving in the best SUVs and whatever you want to have. It's a mindset, okay? It's a mindset. For ladies also, there are so many opportunities. Okay, there's one, uh, one lady, one girl student of mine, who just concentrated on recruiting for BPOs. I will recruit only for BPOs. Printing money. Another girl started uh, 
baking her her main strength was icing you know doing icing and things like that and she could make figures and out of ice and that has become a speciality and she is uh, doing very well not only that that she's opened a store in um, in her college where she she studied you know for the students and they can have her creations i mean there are a lot of options uh, that are there but that will need a separate kind of a session by me because it's a pretty long long drawn out i hope i have answered your questions next question please please raise your hand whoever wants to ask question mm -hmm. I hope uh, yes. on the right side of the maybe some faculty can ask. Yeah. Any faculty member from our department? Or I'm very clear and there's no doubt, which is also good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very clear to us. So, so uh, like my books. Yes, yes, sir, yes. Reading from you, no? <laughs> sure, sir. Sure, that all those books are there in our library as well. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you, sir. You, you become special friends of mine because you so <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So yeah. uh, we have Rohit here. Uh, so Rohit, please proceed with the question. Uh, unmute yourself. Can you hear? Hear me, Rohit? He'll, he'll have to unmute himself. Yeah, please unmute him. Ah, yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Um, sir, my question is for Dr. Sudhir Andrew. Yeah. Uh, sir, as you are a well known person and successful too, sir, so, sir, uh, so every person must face obstacle and failure to get a success, sir. Absolutely. So, what is your biggest failure or obstacle that you had faced in order to reach where you are now? And how did you tackle that? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Yes, when I passed out of I am Ahmedabad, yes, sir. Uh, this is in 1971. Sir. And you know, I am Ahmedabad is a pre premium business school in India. Yes, sir. And I had five offers. In those days, we could have any number of offers from very good companies. And one was the Oberoi's. Now, the hotel industry at that time was count considered very lowly in the eyes of the public. They thought that only failure people used to join hotels, you know, not smart people and all that. Um, but what happened is that the hotel industry, the Oberoi's had tied up in Intercontinental who brought in a lot of sophisticated management systems which they couldn't understand. You know? So they decided to take on MBAs. And I told my, my faculty advised me, they were, and I owe it to them. They said, Sudhir, if you can take the first two years, first two years, you will you can leave a footprint in the industry because the hotel industry is a sunrise industry okay? sunrise means it's just starting to explode my friends when i joined there were articles mba turns waiter okay some of when i was training there i had to go through the kitchen training <laughs> and my first job the people were uh, in the hotel, uh, yeah, the people already working in the hotel thought, saw me as a great threat. Who's this MBA going to take our jobs kind of thing, you know? Yes, and yes. they put, the, to fix me, they put me in the butchery and they said, you slaughter uh, 200 chickens. Okay, they are live chickens. They don't come dressed as they are now. And this fellow did it one shot on the neck and, you know, and he says, okay, and he goes off and he said, now you do it in one hour, we want 200 chickens slaughtered. It took me a full hour to catch one fellow in the basket, they used to come in baskets. You know? I was a total failure in that, you know. Uh, but um, I stuck on. 
I took on the humiliation. I took uh, and it was, uh, I stuck on and I said, I've got to do it. Today, I am where I am. I have left a footprint in the industry. Another thing that I would like to give advice to the students is that um, don't go for the ordinary. When I finished my senior management training program with the OPMs, uh, all the people wanted to get into operation. It was glamorous, you know? It was very glamorous. You meet customers, you meet... I chose to join Human Resources. And they teased me like hell. And they said, what kind of person are you? Uh, you have... Uh, yeah, you will be stuck in the basement because human resource department is always in the basement. You can't meet customers. You are always in the in the dim blue corridors of the basement. I, I didn't care for it. But what I did make happen when I went there, that I created OCLD, which is one of the leading things I created. Uh, and... Um, and it's a leading um, hotel school right now. So those kind of things happen if you are able to think differently. Normally we go with the herd, you know, some log karne and also do. No, if you want to succeed in the future, think differently. Don't look at like that boy who said, I'll take a cart and give biryani outside. I don't mind standing there, okay? He's changed his mindset. He's adapted. So you also have to think that way, that I care about others. I don't care about others. I'm going to do what I am very good at. Okay? And that's it. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. So one Hi. thing I want to ask you is like will the syllabus for educational institutions will change and what will can you can you speak a little louder, Arti? I can't hear you. Okay. Bring your mic closer. Yeah. Yes, so will syllabus for educational institutions will change uh, and uh, which uh, new subjects will be introduced, sir? What do you think about? Yes, yes, uh, that's a good question you asked me. Thank you. Uh, and that is that uh, online education is going to be the thing of tomorrow. Okay. So the students today have, like what we are doing right now will have to happen, uh, will happen forever. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities for online education for a university because they can make big bucks. They can extend their uh, reach across the world with online education. The second thing is that they, the, the faculty have to uh, train uh, to be able to do online education. They have to train. Okay, uh, it's, it's not like just giving a talk like we stand in a class and give a talk. It's no longer. That's the worst thing in online education. We have to move from pedagogy to andragogy, which is uh, pedagogy, as you know, is student uh, teacher led uh, you know, learning and andragogy is student led learning. Now, we have to create those kind of vehicles in which the students learn, research, and develop their own learning and present it to the teacher. So they do all the work. And the present batch of students are all Gen Z people, you know? They would love it because they are very creative, they're tech savvy and all that. And uh, I've, I've tested it out here when I was in uh, Lavasa and I went to Luzon. What lovely pre presentations they do, fantastic. Because they are so tech savvy, they can bring in all sorts of things, you know? presentation I, I not struggle like me like I was doing you know they they just flow through the thing so they will have to go into that kind of mode uh, of uh, student uh, learning system of course uh, the third thing is that now it is not about general generalization the main thing about future edu hospitality education is skill okay uh, Today, a business a general manager is a business manager, actually. He's not treated like, he won't come from the ranks of the hotel, hotel background. He normally would be a general manager. 
coming out of a business school, okay? So if a student wants to get there, if that's their thing, then they'll have to go for a higher education, a master's degree in business and go on from there. But the real business is in, 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 uh, in uh, skills. You have the skills, uh, you can name the price. So it is like butter sculpture or ice carving, specialized skills that are unique and you can make a lot of money in that, okay? Uh, so the focus will change, but what I would certainly en uh, emphasize in hospitality school is to bring in entrepreneurship development. That is going to be big, okay? How to make business plans, how to do a SWOT analysis, how to do a, make a budget, uh, and all those kind of things, you know, uh, that uh, the university and the course curriculum will have to ensure that there's a very sound and robust entrepreneurial um, subject and taught well. As a matter of fact, when they finish their studies, they will, should be able to uh, have a ready-made plan by the time they graduate. Uh, they may not use it, but they have made a plan, they've done the work, of a ready-made business plan of what they would like to do. And mind you, uh, all universities are bringing venture capitalists and people with ideas into universities now. There's a very healthy uh, connection there. Uh, they're willing to put money on a new idea and a new skill, okay? So there you go, uh, that, that's it. I'll tell you a, an example of one of my students she uh, developed uh, uh, to, to drive away the mosquitoes and insects in a kitchen. You, know? you do have those ultraviolet lights, lights in order to, uh, to attract them. You know? But she has a drone, a very small little uh, drone she created for the kitchen where the drone goes chasing all the swallows around. So it's very interesting. And a venture capitalist gave, that, uh, gave her money and said, okay, I'm putting money in this business. So it's going to be a very important technology inside the kitchen soon. Yeah. Any we'll other question? We'll take one more question, sir. And then yeah. we'll, uh, yeah. uh, last question. Anybody wants to please raise your hand on the sidebar of the Zoom. Anybody wants to ask a question, please raise your hand on the sidebar of the Zoom. Right side will be there, you can see. Uh, okay, Govind sir, shall we? Find up. Yeah, let's find out. That's up. time we wind up. <laughs> yes, <sir>. throat is uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, uh, Dr. Sudhir Andrew, sir, to encounter uh, lovely questions uh, from young generations, including me also, and uh, lovely faculty members and all participants. Uh, and I would like to uh, get the permission from our Honorable Vice Chancellor to uh, wind up our sessions. So. Sir, uh, shall we go for a vote of thanks? Yes, Professor. Yeah, please, sir. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Sorry. So this is my privilege and honor to offer vote of thanks uh, to our honorable vice chancellor, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your lovely support and coordinations to organize a, a lovely, in fact, uh, very good informative sessions. Uh, thank you very much, sir, and respected uh, Dr. Sudhir Andrew, sir, I can say the father of the hospitality education. So thank you very much, sir, for your lovely support and coordinations. Uh, in any point of time, sir, used to guide us also, and today also that, in fact, had uh, some of the technical problems, and sir, uh, guided us. So thank you very much, sir, uh, for your lovely uh, SOPs and interactions and uh, wave talk with all the students and attendees. And uh, big thanks uh, to all attendees, students, faculty members, associate deans, and all supportive staff and ITKM. Today, uh, that Om Radhe ma'am is uh, she's there, she's supporting and heading the ITKM uh, department. And thank you very much to all of you. I'd like to say a few words, if I may. Sir, I'd please. like to thank the Honorable Vice Chancellor for giving me, for inviting me here. 
and for giving me this opportunity to speak to Sikkim. I have to visit your institute one day, okay? And I hope you will have me there, then I can in physically uh, yes, sir. give a lecture to you all. And I want to thank you students and all the people who have been involved here in putting this together. I'm very honored and touched for your kind words. And I wish you all the best and keep safe. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you very Sudhi much. Sudhi, and Sudhi, 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 Sudhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Sir, Sudhir, you are most welcome. I was about to say, but uh, so, Sanjeev did not put any space to talk. <laughs> no. I thought that personally, I invite no, you. No, no, no. Because until as you come and see Sikkim, you cannot see the beauty of Sikkim, sir. Yes, yes. No, I robots, to no automation can explain Sikkim. Sikkim yes. is such a beautiful, lovely place. And moreover, oh. The people of Sikkim are very lovely, sir. Actually, they are yes. very warm. Yes, I am sure. They are warm heartedly welcome. We are welcome you. Whenever you have time, give us a one, one small SMS. We'll take care about it. Thank you. Thank Another you very important much. Thing, sir, I, I loved the presentation, sir. So systematically, you talk from right from airport to the delay <laughs> that dispatching, sending the, 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 the guests back to their own places. I think uh, after looking at it, I think we we are in the process of developing this SOPs for our education institutions. Already, SRM group started. I I was a boy in the part of that actually. It has given us a, it gave us a very good uh, insight. I think how to take it one by one, one by one. And some of the uh, participant asked you a question about the robots. I think yeah. whether we want or we do not want this is going to be future. Not today. Not immediately. After 20 years or 20, I really yeah, agree. Same time. Yeah. Youth are thinking and other things. And it's very, uh, I think many of our students are presenting there uh, because of the, you cannot see the list and photographs. I think they must have benefited with your talk. I think such a systematic, immediately turn the industry how to cope up with that. But it looks like uh, more of a, uh, your presentation targeting more of a five star and four star and above hotels. There are, I think, what you said, there are so many middle and low, I think, a small scale in hotel industry. And that, I think, once, I think, we would like to, you to talk about that at one point of time. So that is more, I think, uh, uh, challenging because five stars, the, 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 the affordability of clients is very high, actually. But whereas middle and, uh, I think, small scale hotel industry, affordability of the, the people, actually, is very low. We always look for a cheaper one. And another, and more importantly, there are so many sites came, Yatra.com, Make My Trip, Clear My Trip. All these people, they keep on comparing it as a big challenge, what you said in the beginning. Don't go with this uh, uh, the subsidy subsidy <laughs> race. So I think that is whether we want or do not want, people are going to do that. And it's big challenges. I think that the particular segment of industries, industry, the hotel industry is going to face a different challenge, I think. And uh, I'm marvelous, I think the, the way you explain systematically shows your experience, insights, and future things. Thank you so much. I allowed it. I, I, Thank think you, I enjoyed Thank it. You Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir. See you, you again. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very you much. Yeah. And Jai Hind to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Govind, sir, you can. Uh... Yes, sir. Thank you very much uh, for all those who attended. And just uh, I want to add, we not only. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. For... Yes, sir. You can log off, sir, now. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you.